Hello everyone and welcome to a truly spectacular game that will make your head spin. Uh, it's from 1995, it was played in Amsterdam and it's a game between Judith Polgar and Alexei Shirov, uh, one of the greatest attackers against one of the greatest attackers. <laughs> and uh, uh, Judith was some 18 years old at the time this game was played, Shirov was some 22, he's four years um, uh, older than Judith. And uh, okay, it was uh, uh, there was uh, quite a difference in rating, but not all that uh, much if you... Uh, for example, if you check here, uh, Shirov is uh, number 7 in the world. Okay, the game was played in August. This is a rating list from July because back then uh, you didn't have a new rating list every month. I think it was uh, every 3 months. Uh, so Shiro was uh, rated number 7 and uh, Yudit was rated number 27 uh, in the world. Interestingly, you can see that uh, under title everyone is listed as G. Uh, meaning Grandmaster, and she's listed as uh, WG, sort of woman Grandmaster, even though she does have her uh, Grandmaster title um, at, uh, all, all the way from 1991. Uh, she got it very, very early, even uh, beaten Bobby Fischer's record to do it. Uh, but okay, I'm sure Fide has a, a good reason for that. Uh, but uh, getting back to the game, uh, truly a spectacular one. Uh, let's enjoy it, and then we're going to uh, discuss stuff as we usually do. So Judith has the white pieces, and she opens with pawn to e4. Shirov goes for g6. Uh, this is the modern defense, something, uh, for example, Magnus Carlsen uh, plays nowadays, and he has very good results with it. The d4, we have bishop to g7. Uh, and now knight to c3. Uh, we have uh, pawn to c6 by Shirov and now bishop to c4. Just uh, going for rapid peace development. d6 and now queen to f3. You did already threatening uh, queen captures on f7. So e6 and now knight to g to e2. We have b5 by Shirov, bishop to b3 and a5. And this is pretty much, uh, uh, even by modern standards, uh, a, a top uh, top level game. Uh, there, there are many games with uh, the, this exact set of moves being played even in, let's say, 2020. So a3 not allowing Shirov to trap the bishop and now bishop to a6 uh, with d5. Now you could consider a lot of things here. Uh, you don't have to go for d5, you could go for e5, you could go for h4, you could uh, j just try and play it safe. Uh, but Shirov basically wants to have constant pressure along this diagonal, he wants to have the option of playing b4, he wants to put the knights on d7 and d7, and have a very, very flexible setup. Um, uh, so so if you did, might uh, tend to be a little bit over-aggressive, he could go for some sort of a, a counter-attack. But, uh, okay, that's a very good plan, but you have to be very, very precise in doing that, because you know that Yudit will, will come for you. So Shirov she goes pawn to d5, and okay, nothing spectacular happening here, c captures, e captures, and Shirov closes the center with pawn to e5. She goes knight to e4, uh, improves the, the position of the knight, and now we have queen to c7. Nowadays, uh, it, it is known that h6 uh, really should be played here for very good reasons, and you will see those reasons as we go deeper into the game. Queen to c7, and now uh, you could consider something like bishop to d2 here, you could consider h4, uh, but you it goes for the immediate pawn to c4 and it is now as of move 12 that this position has never been reached again and uh, you know from a perspective of 1995 we have a completely new game and okay uh, Shirov says that's a free pawn let's grab it uh, b captures on c4 it's the absolute best move you, you really should capture this pawn so c captures on b5 uh, b captures on c4 now bishop to a4 with check uh, and okay, knight to d7, and now knight 2 to c3. Uh, preventing th this pawn from ever being pushed forward, um, uh, as long as this pawn is on c4, it protects you from the bishop and from the queen on the c file, and from the potential rook on the c file. So even though uh, black won a pawn here, that uh, pawn isn't really doing all that much for black at the moment. And the problem is, how do you continue developing? Uh, this is uh, the problem position of this game, and it's uh, it's very hard to find the move for black. Of course, you cannot play knight to f6. If you, if you just uh, try to develop a knight captures and f6 check wins the game. Okay, the knight on d7 is pinned. Uh, you've just blundered a piece. If you go uh, instead of knight to f6, if you go knight to e7, it's not much better. Look at this. Bishop captures on d7. Uh, queen captures and now bishop to h6, trying to get the bishop away from the defense of the f6 square so you can fork the king and the queen. And now, uh, okay, you can just castle, of course you're not going to fall for that, but now let's say captures, captures, queen to f6 check, king to g8, and now knight captures on d6, uh, Yudit would regain the pawn and uh, be left with the spectacular pass the d pawn, let's say if knight to f5, you can just move the knight back, knight d to e4, then the, uh, the pawn is coming uh, to d6, the rook will support the pawn, and this pawn will forever 
haunt black um, uh, and especially the, the the light square bishop so uh, not really an option so you can't go knight to f6 you can't go knight to e7 is there anything else you could play uh, it, it, it's it's very hard to, uh, uh, like really really difficult to find the move here the move you should play here is either rook to b8 but that's a weird move to play so let's let's say h6 h6 is the top engine move and it uh uh well it, it seems like it solves all of white's problems but you have to see like you really have to see the future in order to play this move because look at this now knight captures on d6 check queen captures on d6 knight to e4 attacks the queen uh, and now what do you do if you play queen captures on d5 then bishop to e3 and uh, after rook to d1 you can just resign here there is no defending this position so you can't really capture the pawn you would have to move the queen queen to c7 and now look at this pawn to d6 and now what do you play uh, you have to move the queen somewhere let's say queen to c8 now comes bishop captures on d7 queen captures and now this spectacular knight the c5 move attacks the black queen the rook on a8 is hanging also the bishop is attacked if the queen moves even pawn to d7 check is an option and uh, it seems like you can just resign here as black but this is exactly everything move by move what you had to do in order to survive that position but in order to do all of this you had to find bishop to b7 uh, from that position <laughs> where you played h6 so okay maybe uh, asking a bit too much the point is now the black the white queen is also attacked and after knight captures on b7 now you play knight to f6 and you try to castle to safety if knight to c5 attacking the queen finally you have e4 here uh, i mean uh, who, who who sees stuff like that queen f4 queen to f5 you offer a queen trade and okay now the game continues you even have nice control over the d7 square with your king and the knight here so that's what you should play here so you can play knight to f6 you can't play knight to e7 you definitely should play h6 or the weird rook to b8 move but shirov says i'm gonna uh skip all of that i'm just gonna play king to e7 now this unpins the king from the bishop uh, but it runs into a different kind of um, a situation uh, so feel free to pause the video for the first time uh, and try to find the only winning move for you that, uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that knight captures on d6 uh, works in this position as well, but for very different reasons. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is of course knight captures on d6. And the reason for that is, look at this, now queen captures on d6, you have to play this, and now knight to e4. And now the difference is, uh, after queen captures on d5, there is no more bishop to e3 followed by rook to d1. Uh, because now if you go for bishop to e3, just knight to f6, and you don't have to worry about anything uh, because the, the knight on d7 is no longer pinned. So you don't have knight captures on f6 check. Uh, it would be check if the king was on e8, and here the black queen would be lost. So uh, that also one of the reasons why she should have moved the king to e7 to be able to play this. But Judith finds a different uh, killing uh, uh, maneuver, and that's... Uh, uh, bishop to g5 with check uh, and now what do you play knight d to f6 was played uh, not not much else you can try here and now again uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find the only winning idea uh, for you to, uh, while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, spotting this uh, absolute brilliancy. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook a to d1. Uh, whenever you uh, try to analyze a position and rook a to d1 is possible, always think it's rook a to d1. Always, you know, think of... Uh, uh, think of uh, Anderson's evergreen game like if Anderson didn't think of rook a to d1 we would not have the evergreen game so uh, always think of rook a to d1 and now the problem is what do you do with the queen here I is there a move you can try here of course this check is impossible you can just pick up the queen and the knight uh, cannot move so you have to move the queen somewhere uh, let's say you try to move the queen somewhere weird let's say queen to e6 the problem here is that rook to d7 check uh, works uh, whatever black plays and now uh, okay you don't have to to give up the queen just yet, yet king to f8 now knight to c5 attacks the queen uh, and after 
after queen to e8. Now look at this. Rook captures an f7 with check, and now this again becomes a problem. Uh, what you play here, if you capture with the king, then of course just bishop captures queen. So you have to capture with the queen. Now comes a queen captures rook on a8, uh, king to e7, and queen to a7 with check. King to f8, and now queen to b8 with check. And finally, after you block this, now comes knight to d7 check, and the black king has no more squares. You have to give up your queen. So after rook to d1, uh, okay, I should have said let's go back, but queen to b7, uh, but now uh, again this runs into rook to d7 with check the knight is still pinned and shirov must part with his queen so queen captures on d7 bishop captures on d7 and now pawn to h6 trying to get um, this bishop uh, 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 away from pinning the knight so you can recapture here uh, and uh, i mean you don't have to play this you could also play king captures on d7 uh, but it's not really spectacular. You're just going to play knight to c5 check and pick up the rook on a8 once again. So after bishop captures on d7, Shirov does play h6, uh, some five moves too late. And now uh, there are plenty of ways you can uh, continue this game, but Judith finds the absolute uh, strongest move, uh, queen to d1. And he was in this position on move 21 that Alexei Shirov resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. There is uh, there's really something spectacular in finishing uh, a, 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 such a brutal attacking game by bringing your queen back to the starting square and your opponent is just helpless. Uh, because uh, now, okay, let's say you capture the bishop h, capture son g5, uh, just queen d6 check. And what do you what do you play? You have to go uh, behind the bishop. Now uh, a nice discovery here: bishop b5 check, king to c8, queen to c6 check, king to b8, and now queen to b6 with check will force a nice um, a checkmate regardless of what you play. Let's say knight to d6 checkmate. And if you don't capture the bishop, what else is there to do? You could try running away with the king, but now just queen to d6 with check. Regardless of what you do, uh, th there's just no saving this position. Knight to e7, but now you know you you no longer have control over the f6 square so bishop captures bishop captures queen captures the rook is hanging rook to h7 and now queen captures on e5 and you have zero compensation for uh you you're not having a queen uh, because look at this uh, they both have a knight they, they both have a bishop they both have a rook and uh Judith has a queen for a full rook here but this rook isn't even uh, present in the game so okay it would be completely pointless to continue this so after queen to d1 beautiful finish uh uh, in 21 moves uh, by uh, by 18 year old uh, <laughs> Judith Polgar, uh, who also not only won this game but did incredibly well uh, in the tournament. These are the final standings of the tournament. You can see that uh, she uh, was only behind half a point behind uh, Julio Zuniga and uh, Jan Timan, uh, who uh, finished uh, first uh, uh, tied first uh, with seven and a half points, and she was clear third with seven points ahead of some uh, incredibly strong chess players like Yasser Serevan, Huzman, Shirov, Morozovic, uh, Salov, John. John Noon, uh, Kalifman, Piquet, uh, and uh, Lokvan Veli. Uh, John Noon uh, even uh, placed this game in his uh, famous um, uh, book uh, about uh, brilliancies. I don't know the exact name of the book, but it's like 135 incredible chess brilliancies. Uh, and this game uh, made it to uh, his book. And if you are familiar with John Noon, uh, or John Nunn, uh, you know that uh, you know that's not an easy list uh, to make. Uh, so yeah, uh, absolutely an incredible game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I mean, in in that position after this knight two to c three was played, uh, finding finding this uh, <laughs> h6 idea and all of those uh, moves of uh, finding bishop to b7 and then e4. I mean, uh, I mean surviving this. <laughs> Uh, as you can see, was uh, n not possible, even even for uh, you know a, a true master of the mystic arts like uh, Alexei Shirov. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh... I, I mean, I, I uh, was so impressed by this game. I, I, I don't know how uh, this is the first time uh, I'm seeing it. So I'm very glad to be able to present it to you, as I imagine some of you are seeing it for the first time as well. Uh, but what an uh, attacking masterpiece. Uh, but yeah, even though uh, Judith was uh, some t uh, 27th uh, ranked uh, in the world at the time, uh, uh, she she got to I think in 2004 uh, to being the uh, eighth uh, number eight in the world, uh, which is absolutely incredible. She's the only woman ever to cross the 2700 uh, rating threshold uh, to some 2735, I believe. And uh, okay, Ho Yifan was fairly close. I think she was 2686, very close to to, to 2700. Uh, but that was also back in 2015. 
15. Uh, so we'll see what uh, what the future brings, who will be the next woman to, to hit that 2700 mark. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Brilliant attacking masterpiece. Uh, I would like to thank WW, uh, DWW, Simon Johnson, uh, Ravishing Reptiles YouTube, uh, Francisco Moscoco, and RandomPile.net for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world, uh, the Tata still is starting tomorrow. Uh, uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.